All right, here we go. We're going to do some decoding of remote ID. By the time we reach the end of this video, we should have built our own Sniffle firmware for the Cat Sniffer version 3 specifically. And we will use that to decode what the FAA is detailing right here, remote ID. That's uh, a transmission that has both identification and location information in it. You can see um, the diagram down here. It talks about Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. I'm sure there's other means of it being transmitted, but I'm going to focus on the Bluetooth portion of this, specifically Bluetooth 5 with extended frames and long range, I think is what it's called. I'm not going to go crazy into detail on remote ID. You can look that up. I'm going to spend my time showing how to decode the real-time transmissions from a uh, Holly Stone remote ID transmitter that I picked up for a particular drone that I have that didn't come with remote ID to begin with. We're going to do that by use of Sniffle here. So Sniffer for Bluetooth 5 and 4. I'm going to get it working with the Cat Sniffer and uh, the last week or so the Sniffle developer has been extremely uh, helpful in making this possible. Not only making a firmware that really runs well on the cat sniffer, but also a Wireshark dissector uh, fork of an existing one that ties this all together nicely with Wireshark. So uh, I'm just going to jump right into building this. This is on a War Dragon here running uh, Dragon OS, of course. And what we need to do is a couple things to get prepared to build this. I've got a few windows open here. I'm just going to do a lot of this in my home directory, but we'll get clone sniffle down and we'll take a look at what is required to get this up and going. So we're going to need this tool chain uh, to compile the firmware and you just follow the link here. I'm going to look for the arm Let's see, arm none knobby. I'll grab the first one there. We'll let that download. And I had did this um, previously, but I'm going to walk back through it here. We'll let that download. And we're also going to grab the TI Simple Link SDK here for the Linux build. We'll download that as well. While we're at it, we'll go ahead and get Wireshark prepared here. So if we start up Wireshark and we go to help about folders, I find that the ext cat path, uh, we'll use this, this top one, this user lib directory. And we also want to make sure that there's this personal plugins folder made. If it's not made, when you double click it, it will make it. So we're just going to keep that in mind. And what we'll do is close out of Wireshark. And we're going to grab the Wireshark dissector I talked about. And we're going to, not this one, we're going to get clone it into that local lib Wireshark plugins directory that's in my home hidden folder just try and get everything set up here beforehand so that should take care of the Wireshark piece as far as when we start receiving the signal it'll break it out properly in Wireshark Let's see, we have Sniffle, and one other thing we're going to grab is the Cat Sniffer Tools repository. Let's see. Just put that in our home directory for right now. Let's go to our downloads directory and we'll ch mod. Let's see, what was this called? Simple. OK, 
Okay, so we're going to make the dot run file executable. Now I've already ran this before, but just to show you what it looks like. You have the Texas Instruments SDK installer come up. Just leave it in the home directory right there is perfectly fine. And you can see in my case it already exists so it already installs. I'll save a little bit of time in this video and not go through the installation again. It does it all and it ends up exactly where you told it to so we're fine there. Let's see what else and we will let's see we'll extract our tool chain that we downloaded Do it in our home directory. Okay. I know I'm kind of going through this quick, but really this setup uh, part is not too terrible here. In order to build our Sniffle firmware, probably should have pointed that out. And what we're going to do is we're going to edit the SDK in order to have everything line up to build this firmware. So if we come back to our home directory we should find that there is this TI folder, simple link, and we're going to edit the, uh, let's see, use your favorite editor. We're going to edit this imports.mask folder, and this should already be uh, changed to what lined up with my setup here. So, Home Dragon TI XDC Tools, Home Dragon TI Sys Config. Just make sure that that lines up with what you actually have, depending on the version of the SDK that you downloaded. So for example TI XDC yep that matches and sysconfig matches let's see what else um, the CMake portion should just say CMake and then really the GCC ARM compiler is what we're most interested in here I'll try this out again just make this line up with how you extracted things and the version number. So if I look at Home Dragon ARM, you can see that I have that directory specified there, and then within that is the ARM Nanabi, so on and so forth. That should set you up to build the firmware that we need for the cat sniffer. Oops, let's see, let's not change anything there. So if we change into our Sniffle firmware directory, we're going to build specifically for the cat sniffer. And I just need to remind myself. All right, we should be able to run make platform equals CC135. 2p74 and we'll do a 1m underscore 1m if you have if you have everything uh, set up just like I've shown thus far you should have everything you need to build that firmware and then if you look in the directory you'll see there is the sniffle dot hex alright Let's jump over. Let's see where we at here.
catsniffle.hex. All right, let's see. So if I jump into my cat sniffer tools directory, CC2538 BSL, yeah, BSL, there's one thing that I had to install, one uh, additional requirement that I needed to install to DragonOS for this flashing tool, and that was the Let's see, Python magic was taken care of, and really it was just Intel hex. So, sudo pip3 install Intel hex. And see, it's already satisfied. And we're going to use this tool, Python 3. Let's see, look at the help here. I'm just going to basically follow the example here. So, E dash W dash V, and we want to go into our let's see, sniffle firmware. I'm going to do sniffle dot hex, and I'm going to plug in. So the cat sniffer version 3 is really easy to flash. I just hold down the boot one prior to plugging it in. I plug it in, I release should get a series of lights kind of scanning blue lights scanning from top to bottom and we're going to add a dash p for port let's see dev dy ace i think ac or acm zero is what it should be and make absolutely sure that you have built the right firmware and you're flashing the right firmware just like I did. I'm going to unplug, plug back in the cat sniffer. I promise we're almost done. If we go into sniffle, I see sniffle Python CLI. I want to, you can copy some files over to the xcap uh, directory but I'm just gonna let's see sudo ln dash s yeah I'm gonna make a sim link of uh, home dragon sniffle python cli sniffle xcap py to user lib x86 wireshark ext cap and I'm going to call it the same thing yeah so I'm just going to sim link to the directory that wireshark is going to look at and that should be that should be it so we have we have a firmware built we've flashed the cat sniffer I'm looking over I've unplugged it plugged it back in I have a blue light blinking I'm going to start up Wireshark we don't need uh, to do this with sudo I'm gonna scroll down I'm gonna look for the sniffle line here click the little gears make sure that the TTY ACM 0 is recognized and set there auto is fine we'll do extended advertisements and long range you can save parameters I'm just gonna uncheck that so I can set it each time and now it's running it sees nothing right grab the Holly Stone transmitter I'm gonna turn this on and we'll give it a second here and there we go we see that our cat sniffer is sniffing out the remote ID, I know it says open drone ID there, that's those, or that dissector that is making this possible. So I'm receiving real time from the Hollystone transmitter. If I click on one of these, oops, if I click on one of the uh, open uh, drone ID protocol listings there, we can see that now we have our open drone ID breakout here and the entire message packet. I'm not going to open all of this but I promise you once the uh, Holly Stone runs long enough and if it has a GPS fix that that information the authentication information location information all of that is broken out 
and is detailed in each one of these drop downs to include the any information that was program, programmed in about uh, I, the identification information and again location information. So you can see there's the protocol version and again if I waited long enough some of these other fields would be uh, filled out. Okay so that's start to finish up and running I'm sure probably not long after the, I put this video up there would be a firmware release already built compiled by the Sniffle project but if you ever wanted to build Sniffle uh, on your own here's how you can go about it and here's how you can get to the point where you can do remote ID uh, decoding with the cat sniffer. All right, I thought that was pretty cool. So hopefully you find it useful. And there you go. Have a good one.